All right, ready? And then I'm, we got to give these guys In a the shout words out. of the late, great Colonel Sanders, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you from Northern California. Uh, negative K, nothing further. Just, uh... This is the Shots Fired Podcast. Back on the town property case, be With your hosts, Sergeant Kyle Schoberg, retired police officer Mark Redlich, and Deputy Billy. We are America's leading law enforcement resource for training and tactics from experts in the industry. Here are your hosts. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Shots Fired Podcast. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time watching the show, welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. We appreciate it. It helps us push the content out so uh, everybody gets to see it. And again, if you guys like it, make sure you're sharing it with your friends at work, patrol partners, it's a law enforcement podcast, um, although we do talk about you know, a variety of different different topics. And we get a lot of people that reach out to us that are non-law enforcement and thank us for doing the podcast just so that they can kind of learn behind the scenes of what we do, you know, for work and stuff. So I think that's that's pretty cool that we get those. So share it with your friends and your family. Also. Yes, exactly. What I just said. Well, you yeah. said share it with your patrol team partners. And I hope, that share with everybody. I hope that your patrol team partners are like friends or family to you, kind of, I mean. They should be. Kind of. Yeah, yeah kind of. Hey, just share it to people you like. Yeah, there, there you, go. you go. And share it to the people you and don't like. And your family. Blast it, out on, <laughs> blast it out on your social media. Help, your help us out. <laughs> it took me a second. I was a step behind on that one. That was good. I like it. Uh, before yeah. we get into the show today, we do want to give uh, a couple couple shout outs, uh, a couple important ones. And those are, we want to share some GoFundMes uh, that recently uh, kicked off this last week um, due to some unfortunate circumstances to some of the folks that listen to our show. And actually, one of these incidents was a guy that attended um, a class that I taught up in Oregon recently. So let's jump into his. He uh, He's a cop SWAT guy uh, up, in, up in Oregon, and they were out on a SWAT call out. There was a guy barricaded in a vehicle. I believe he had, was wanted for some um, weapons charges, felony weapons charges. And long and the short is he barricaded himself. SWAT team shows up, and throughout this call for service, uh, I believe they launched gas at the vehicle trying to get him to come out of the car. And at some point he did exit the vehicle with an AR 15 and opened up on those guys and striking uh, Jesse in each of his legs with an AR. So he took uh, substantial damage to his legs. Um, I mean, he was shot twice with a rifle. That's not good. You know, so he's out right now. He did survive the incident, but um, he definitely needs help. You know, there's a lot of medical costs associated. Workman's comp is, as we all know, is kind of difficult to work with. So if you guys could hop on his GoFundMe and I'll put it in the description of the show, please do so. Any, any little bit helps out. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. And, and Jesse, we hope you get better. Uh, the second is going to be out of Washington County, Oregon. Um, again, another one out of Oregon. So these guys are having bad luck. That's um, confusing though. I know, Washington right? Washington County, County Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. But uh, uh, side note, sorry, not to, yeah, not to take away from this, but yeah. So, so Mike Trotter, um, deputy, um, sorry, sorry, <laughs> was on patrol and was struck by a drunk driver, and there were some other folks that were also struck by the drunk driver who ultimately lost their life. Mike is in critical condition; he did survive it. However, he is in the hospital uh, fighting for his life. <laughs> they have set up a GoFundMe for him as well. We will also put that in the description in the show. And Mike, we wish you well and a uh, fast, speedy recovery. Yep. Please donate, even if it's five bucks. Yeah, we got we got to donate to these guys. And last time we posted one of these for Code One over on Australia for one of their officers that got hit by a drunk driver, we did have quite a few of our listeners donate um, a decent amount of money to them. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. On a side note. I want to know if there's an Oregon County in Washington. There's got to be. If not, then. Well, there's a Nevada County in California. Where I I'm from. That actually makes sense. Now, the, I, don't I'm know just, if it I makes just grew sense. up with that, and that always made sense to me. Right. But, but wa- Washington County, Oregon <laughs> seems weird to me. Do you think there's a California County in Nevada, though? Probably not. No. That actually isn't. I know that for a Anytime I've ever told somebody, they're like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, Nevada County. They're like, oh, you live in Nevada? I'm like, no, it's California. 
but yeah, yeah. that's whatever. the same as saying we live in California County, California. That wouldn't make sense either. Yeah. Anyways, actually, no, that wouldn't make sense. There's no, California no. City in California. Yeah. yeah, there is. We have a Paris in California. The, the, all right, let's not okay. get off topic. We're getting <laughs> way we're, we're getting way off track here, boys. Um, all right, all right well, sorry, Kyle. I'm sorry. I'll straighten up. Is my thank you. My, how's my posture? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I like how somebody left a comment. I think it was our last video, and they're like, "Kyle's crack, cracking the whips on, on those boys or something like that." Because uh, you guys think one, I'm a micromanager, and a, uh, you are. We don't out, think it. A shout out to one of the guys that was actually in our academy texted me and said, uh, "Dang, Kyle does really micromanage you guys." So other people do notice. Someone has to be the leader. <laughs> and it just happens to be the guy at the head of the table. So ah. let's just leave it at that, all right? Yeah. There's no one up here. Okay. <laughs> let's give our weekly shout outs. Uh, we got a new one here. Barbells and Submissions. Barbells and Submissions was established from the desire to unite the worlds of jiu-jitsu and weightlifting through a unique lifestyle brand. Their current offerings on the mat and off the mat include rash guards, unisex t-shirts, men's hoodies, women's crop tops, and women's cropped hoodies. They also want to redefine the word athlete and be the standard that athletes set to challenge and better themselves. An athlete can be anyone who strives to push themselves to their own physical and mental limits to become the best version of themselves. Whether you're a high-level grappler training for competitions or just someone who has personal goals to achieve, check them out online at barbellsandsubmissions.com and type in discount code SHOTSFIRE20 for 20% off your order. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the T-shirts. They're awesome. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. And we've got your sticker up here on our locker. Go check them out. Buy yourself a t-shirt if you guys are into jiu-jitsu. Go check out their rash guards. So go yeah. check out their social media uh, too, um, Instagram and Facebook. You guys should follow them and see what they got what going on. What city are they located in? Because I am I know we have international listeners. Yeah, I think it's El Grove. Probably aren't going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they're uh, here in the Sacramento area. Okay. Yeah. So local to us. Right. Um, so thank you. And we wish you guys luck. Next, let's uh, give our shout outs to Tap Wax and Go. Yeah. Right? Another local. Uh, local owned, law enforcement owned, yeah. donates back to law enforcement officers that have been injured. Yeah, that's an awesome cause as well. I mean, if you guys have a mustache or a beard like these guys. Even if you don't have a mustache, you should probably use it. I think you could use it. Where would you use it? You have a little well, flip I mean, up you in know. your hair. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know. If you're not manscaping, like, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. You can make whiskers out of that. Just, you could. Just the curly. Yeah. Yes. Stash, stash. Fuck it. Do yes. it. Yeah. There you go. You guys just, you, you just got a new, uh, we just a new way of using it. a whole new it. market. Yeah. Go oh, check them out. Tapwaxandgo.com. Uh, buy, buy yourself some beard mm -hmm. oil and, and mustache wax. Billy, you've been using it. Yeah. Mark, you've been using it. Yeah, you guys really today. like it. Yeah. I do actually have to reorder. So, and yeah, wait, he got married too. Just I saw on his uh, Instagram, he just just got married last weekend. So congratulations to yeah. you, dude, for for getting yeah. married. Nice. Well, um, and then check out Girls Barbecue. Yeah, I actually made a steak while we were gone, uh, an elk steak that I got in Oregon last trip, and it was good. phenomenal. So good. I work. keep getting people asking me like, "Is it really that?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm telling it you, is. like, it is good." I, yeah. I mean, honestly, we we wouldn't push it out this much if it wasn't yeah. as good as we say it is. It is delicious. Go check them out, Girls Barbecue. Dot com and then of course let's roll into our sponsor of the show we're proud to announce we've partnered with our new sponsor tac ops tac ops tactical training conferences and trade shows provide tactical training for patrol swat tims and corrections this year's events will host 50 tracks to choose from and a vendor show with over 100 exhibitors showcasing the latest products, technologies, and services. These events have something for everyone from lecture-based classes and in incident debriefs to combative and live fire courses. They also provide instructor certifications in taser, pepper ball, distraction devices, impact music munitions, OC chemical munition, and an AR-15 armor course. In addition to the great training value, they host networking functions with entertainment and some great food and drinks. The events for 2022 are listed in the description. Please check out their website, SWATconference.org. All right, let's jump into the show. Um, we got uh, some Q&As to answer from some of the listeners. We threw it out there on social media. If you guys had any questions uh, for us to answer on the show, uh, like I said before, we, we would do that for you. So we threw it out there. We got some good questions, and we're going to go through them and, and answer them. These are actually ones that we haven't even asked uh, before, which is pretty unusual. Let's see here. 
let's kick it off with the first one. And that is what excites you about going to work every day? Uh, personally, I would say, uh, you know, for, for what I'm doing now, the, the excitement, the chase, the adrenaline highs, and then I very fortunate. I'm on a very small team with good people that, uh, are all my friends. So I get to, I get to go to work and hang out with my friends, which is, which is nice. Yeah. Although, I mean, it's, you know, there, there's boring times and bad times. So, but yeah. that's what keeps, keeps, keeps the, the adrenaline going and the excitement. That's why I go to work. Yeah. I mean, I think I could, I could second that. Like I, I like going to work. I like the people I work with. You know, you work with a team long enough and you start to develop, um, you know, that small little brotherhood. You know how each other react to certain stuff. I mean, you could, you, you know somebody well enough when you work with them long enough, like just by the tone of their voice on the radio, if something's not not good or right. or whatever, right? So I, I, I enjoy that part of it. Uh, another thing for me is, like you said, just, just like truly the unknown. Like you never know what is going to happen when you walk out that door and go to work every day. It could be something really, really good that happens at work and you get to do some good stuff or, you know, it could be something bad or, or somewhere in between, uh, in the middle. I love just not knowing how my day is going to play out. And like, if you think back to like what you did before you were a cop and it was like, you pretty much knew like every day when you went to work, like, okay, like even in construction, it was like, all right, we're doing this. And there's like a plan. Yeah. Right. Like you knew exactly what you were going to be doing well, was a bad day. If it didn't, if you didn't know what you were doing. Exactly. Like if things didn't go the way that it was supposed to go, then, right. then yeah, it's, it's a bad day. <clears throat> um, but generally speaking, like most jobs, like, you know what you're going to be doing. I do heading into it. Right. So the, the thing I love about our job is like, you don't like you, it, every day it's different. And I, that's, I know that's cliche, but, um, I love that part of it. Hmm. Um, and then like you said, dude, just, I love the adrenaline rush. It's like, it's almost like addicting, um, getting that. So th those are probably my main reasons why I enjoy going to work every day. You know, so I, how about let's, when you were a cop, what, <laughs> Let's not talk about what yeah. I don't. Wanna, <laughs> let's not talk You're about like, what. Well, I don't really. Yeah, like, I do well, actually, I got like a cool work. office in my house. I, I work. Do. From, I work from home. But yeah. when Anyways. I was a cop, I liked going to work and working with my team. I like yeah. the guys on the team. Yeah. I like the gym. I like l laughing, joking constantly. That's what I liked about going to work. The shit talking. Like, I mean, oh, that's yeah. a huge part. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I also would say that if your partners aren't talking shit to you, <laughs> they probably don't like you. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. If if there's no bantering or you're not included, yeah. you're well, not liked. And yeah. That's a shitty position for somebody to be in. Yeah. But so, you've done it to yourself. So don't get mad when someone's talking a little, like, friendly. I mean, yeah. if they get pretty personal, then maybe, I, maybe you can, yeah. hey, stop that. Or someone else should step in and stop that. But, uh, yeah, like, like, like friendly talk shitting or shit talking is... Is part of law enforcement, I think. Part of part of teams. I don't. Yeah, I think it's yeah. in a lot of jobs. Yeah, as I say, it's part of teams. Yeah. Like construction, yeah. it's huge. Yeah, yeah. Construction is way huge. Yeah, yeah. and you don't have to be PC. I don't think. Yeah, unfortunately, in our if, job, you do. Yeah, you yeah. definitely are not. Yeah, there are people that complain like, "Oh, he's being mean." Well, maybe he likes you. Like, yeah. you know, get over it. Um, if he's it, not being mean to you or nobody's giving you any attention, they probably don't like you. Yeah, I'd be more. Yeah, like you said, more concerned about that. All right. Um. We this got, one, what's another this one? one's kind of funny. So what, what's the most, and Billy, this probably doesn't apply to you because you're okay. your deputy, but what, well, let me see. What's the most obscure traffic ticket you've ever wrote? And it's actually funny. Cause like I have something that immediately comes to mind. Yeah, me too. I wrote a ticket for bald tires. I literally got out. That was pretty weak, dude. Measured and they had bald tires. Was That's that obscure? Okay. Let me ask you. Was yeah. that like, was that like a pre, like pre-planned thing? Like not at all. You just decided. I was with the training officer and we saw a car and he said, find a reason to stop it. And I could not find a reason. And he says, mm. look really hard. And I was like, well, he's got bald tires, but I don't know anything about it. He's like, well, that's a violation. So let's stop pull him over for bald tires. Let's remind folks that the vehicle code, at least in California is what, like probably that thick. Yeah. I mean, it's thick, you know, but you, you can't even, you're not going to remember. You have to have a gas cap on your car. That is true. It is illegal to drive around in California without your gas cap on. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. You probably don't know a lot of traffic laws. Uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of them for PC. Yeah. 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 The important. The, the so mine, mine was, um, 
I mean, I guess I should, I don't know if I should admit this or not, but it's been a long time. In my old agency, we were kind of goofing around cause it was slow and they were like, um, let's flip through the vehicle code book and throw your finger in there and like whatever you land on, you got to like go out and, and find and try to find it, you know? And so, uh, I landed on, God, you guys are dicks. Yeah. It's <laughs> fucked up. I landed on, uh, it was not like tethering your load down or something oh, yeah, in that, the bed of your truck. One, so I'm like, I'm like, that's okay, a, that's a good one. Yeah. There's a lot of people that leave home Depot and you and you watch them and you're like, I'll give you two blocks. And, and they're just, they're just off. causing all these issues left and right. Just, I mean, I mean it's good. It does flying out of your truck. Like I, I mean, whatever. I get it, but I like, I mean the vehicle code, vehicle code in general. Like I, yeah. I look at it as like, I honestly am kind of on the, the side of some of the people who say like, don't you have something better to do? Yeah. And yeah. if you don't, I get it. Or change your job. Wheel? Like, I mean, you look at highway patrol and you look at like motor cops and everything. Their job is traffic enforcement. So I say, hey, go through that vehicle code book and find whatever you can. But your patrol cops, like, I think that you should use the vehicle code to try and fight crime. Yeah. And I, no, don't, I agree. And, like, and, and, and that's, I, I mean, personally, I work in a busy area. So, yes, that's, a, you know, it's. There's yeah, other there's things, small, but I mean, like in a small, yeah, ha- like safe neighborhood kind of thing, people complain a lot about speeding. I truly and think it depends. Like and I get that. That's that's yeah. the public. But I really think it depends where you work, like where you're working, how busy is it? What are your call for services like? Like, I mean, like honestly, like where I came from, it was super small. There was not a lot of calls going on. It was like, I think at agencies <laughs> like that, you probably are expected to go out there and probably do a little bit more traffic enforcement. Busier departments, if you have a traffic unit, like we all, we all do, um, we well, do you don't, but yeah, we do. But you guys aren't responsible the, the for that, but you guys, the highway, highway patrol, patrol. <laughs> yeah. They're but the point is, is unit. like, we have a motor team, you you guys had a motor team, like, that is their job, and, and you're, you're right, like, I think the patrol guys should be going out there, and, and I think it's everybody's job. It's just more specific. Yeah, everyone has their own, you know, own yeah. opinion on it, but r- regardless, um, Back to the question, I when I got I landed on that, and so we had a dump, some, relatively in the area. So I just went and posted up like the route to the dump, and pretty easy nab somebody that was. And you wrote the ticket too. Yeah, I wrote the ticket instead of the guy. And I actually, he actually took me to court on it. Good. And I didn't know shit about the the, you know, I just knew what the section was. I knew he was in violation of it, but like, dude, this guy had like measurements and like pictures and shit. Like I didn't expect that, and I think I I don't remember. I think I still won the the uh, court the case but um anyways that was mine you kind of went down a level with me yeah like that was pretty weak that was like the weakest thing i've ever wrote wrote, for sure how many tickets have you wrote hey real quick let's go around how many tickets dude i don't know not very many not me not not many hundred oh what way over that okay so in 15 years um i'm probably that or less i don't write tickets dude. i've never been a ticket i don't like it like, you know, a lot of times I feel for people like, right. Like I've, I've been given tickets, you know, like sometimes people are in bad spots and like you giving them a, a citation is going to like bury them further into a hole. And, and some people are like, Hey, I'm really trying to get my license back. Right. And then you're going to bang them with a, oh, with no, a citation. And you, it's like, okay, now you just set them back probably five steps. Right. So I, I judge it by like who I'm stopping. What's their attitude? Like, you if know, you're is driving it, on a suspended license or you have no license, you are getting a ticket. For sure. Are you towing their car? Back then when you could, yes. 100%. You still can. You still can. Oh, yeah. oh I'm, I haven't been there in yeah. 10 yeah. years. But yeah, you're absolutely. Towing their car. But so now... Unless... Okay, but here, here's my scenario. And any, here's, any here's, tra- my, here's, here's why, um, you know, obviously if they were they were not allowed to drive. Like, I'll, I'll take that. And you're not driving. I'm not writing... I didn't write tickets for that. I just didn't. Every once in a while, if, if you give me attitude... I think maybe three times I got severe attitude and I wrote tickets. But absent that, so now you took this person, you took their car away. Maybe they are trying to fix their life. Maybe they are trying to go to work and that's how they're getting to work. Okay, or the opposite end is it maybe they are complete shit bags, right? And now they're going out and they're they're shooting, they're they're stealing, they're they're you know, doing yeah, drugs. And then you gotta weigh it out. But so say they are and now I go, Okay, um, someone saw a a white Honda leaving and I can go with the plates up and I go, Oh shit. Now that I know that person's in that car, I help solve a crime by not 
a violent crime potentially by not towing a car. I see what you're saying, but there's two I sides came, to it. There's two yeah, sides. I Do came you, from the side where it what it takes for people to get a driver license, to pay for insurance, to have a car, to be responsible. Those are the people that are generally getting hit, the hit and runs by people that are unlicensed. And that's right. that's no, the flip side to it. Right. That, yes. Yeah. And then what does it take? To lose your driver license. What oh, does it, it take a lot, to dude. get a suspended license? Yeah, it so takes a lot. So they've had multiple opportunities. Mm-hmm. What it takes to not have a, a, a insurance. And in the state of California, if you have uninsured motorists, it is the most difficult state in all 50 states to get compensated for that. You have to meet four elements. No other state has four elements. It's ridiculous. So if you were driving without a license and... Even with no insurance, you were getting a ticket and you're getting a car towed. I feel like you only know that because you do PI work. Yeah. For insurance companies. Are you doing no, thirty no. Day, are you doing a thirty day impound or are you doing just a tow? Oh, no, it's always thirty days. Usually it's thirty there, days. There, you, what what that you can tow it and not thirty days. No, no, but I'm gonna yeah. do it for thirty days. Okay, but but so now you towed this person who like I said, the scenario where they're working they're working their ass off, they're trying to get their shit together, right? That's why I say it. you towed their thousand dollar car, right? Yeah. We'll just say. The towing fees and everything on a thirty day impound. Don't care. I'm Easily thirty five hundred bucks. I'm Don't guessing care. well over a thousand. So you just care. you yeah. just donated a car to a tow company. Don't care. That okay. Be, Look, and, I think and, and I'm not saying you're wrong. No, I know. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying that there's there's other sides to you it. You look at what it took to get a suspended license, there's so much more behind the scenes of what that person has done and now they're out there driving when they know they should not be with no insurance and they're going to hit other people cause injury or take off. And that person's going to deal with them yeah. Yeah. all because the cop that pulled them over didn't want to deal with that situation. Even though there's a different see, you're a detective Look, though. deputy, you but, but, I was, deputy but I mean like city cop. But, yeah, but what you I'm saying is picture. like when I was doing this, I was I did, as a detective, uh, I'm doing evidence toast and that's, that's yeah. all I do. Hey, do you, so, do, you, but I mean, it's different. do you guys know how the Oklahoma City bomber was caught? I don't know. Traffic violation. It was like a taillight out or some shit. He got pulled over. That's how the uh, same with the Unabomber, I think, too. All right. I think we're starting, Anyways. To, we're starting to Kyle this or beat a dead horse. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just definitely we're going off. There's de- hey, look, there's two sides to that. I agree with yeah. both of you on that. You, you got. I think you just got to play it by you got to play it by the circumstance as it plays out. I'm not arguing. I mean, I guess I was arguing a little bit you want to not, why. but. But there is two sides to it, and I agree with yeah, both agree. sides. Um, I just personally, where I was coming from, and, and it has to do with <laughs> culture and environment that you're working in and and department. So yeah, all right. Horse officially beat. <laughs> all right, kick kick it wise down real yeah. quick. No, no, you're still Kyle on this. What's next? Yeah. All <laughs> right. Do why do cops leave their patrol cars running? So why do cops leave their cars running? Patrol cars. I left my car running because I wanted the interior of the car to be a perfect climate for when I got back into the car. I didn't want to get into a really hot car, and I didn't want to get into a really cold car. And if you were out of the car for a certain amount of time, your computer would shut down. Mm, And then it took a while to reboot. And if you had to rush to your car, you didn't have a computer on, it was difficult to find where you're going. Yeah, my my biggest thing is uh, if it's hot as shit outside and it gets 110 here, you know, I mean, I want my freaking car not 110. 50 degrees inside when I get back in it. But same, same thing, you know, there's so much like computer equipment, radio stuff. Like there's a lot of electronics in there. And you know, sometimes if your car's older, like that shit will kill your battery. And then you go to jump in it and start it. And like, you have a dead battery and that, that sucks when you're out in the field. But um, most importantly, I just, I don't like my computer shutting off either. And if you have to jump in your car and go somewhere, like I don't want to sit there, take time, boot it back. Like that's too long. I just leave it running. We have little switches in our car where you can, you know, hit the bypass button and then take the key out um, and, and the car will stay running. Um, you know, so in the event someone jumped in your car, like there's, there's no way they could steal it because as soon as you grab the gear shifter and you go to put it in drive, it automatically will kill the car. Oh. So, and all canine cars have that for sure. Um, I Mine is the... The electronics, obviously, there's there's a lot of electronics inside of a, a, a law enforcement vehicle. Yeah. I mean, we all know this. I don't know if the general public necessarily knows it. There's a lot of radios or drawn batteries, the lights, the sirens, computers, all kinds of PA systems. And um, for me, I didn't. I didn't want to turn off my car and then have to run to my car. And it's another step I had to do if I was had to get out of there quick or had to chase someone quick. Uh, as Turning the car on could be a split second. That could matter. 
and it also might not start. Yeah, you don't want that. And but it, it does take time. It does take a little bit of time to turn the yeah. key on, to put your foot on the brake, to put it in drive when you can just get in the car and just slam that thing in gear. Yeah. 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 And then um, there, there was times I would turn it off, though, for the, the quiet, the stealth advantage. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you do. But, yeah, like, especially if you get out on a scene or something and, like, your lights are on or whatever. Like, if you oh, shut yeah. your car off, like, you come back within 30, probably 30 minutes, an hour, like, your car's going to be, your battery's going to be dead from the oh, lights. Oh, yeah, if you, if you have any lights going, you gotta leave, leave your car on for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, like, a tactical advantage to it. Let's see. It's funny that someone asked that because I literally had somebody ask me that last week in a parking lot. Like, why do you leave your car running? And I'm all, because we do. Um, just kidding. Because I am Sergeant Shumar. Yeah, yeah. My truck's running outside right now. Actually, <laughs> yeah. So when I, I get mean, back, we yeah. know Kyle's isn't because yeah. we're not sure if it runs. Oh, say, so yeah. speaking of that, I got my AC fixed finally after two oh, years. Wow. So that shit's cooking, dude. I got AC. I'm freaking, dude, I'm getting off at like six in the morning and it's freaking cold out still. I'm firing that bitch on, dude, just just to know that, like, yep, I got AC, AC now, dude. It's probably Hell what yeah. saved his car as the AC wasn't running. <laughs> now it's just going to completely blow up. P- probably. But if you are, uh, like, work for Chevrolet, like, sponsor this guy right here. Oh, yeah, dude, I'll like, run your I mean, shit uh, ragged. He runs your shit to the ground. And you yeah. can actually probably use your truck part of a commercial. Like oh, Subaru yeah. does, they're like, most you know 90 percent of subarus have been on the road for 30 plus years like yours you just, would just get be there a testament. I, I don't do any maintenance yeah yeah <laughs> nah fuck it like just go at this yeah. point it's like you do maintenance and it's gonna take a shit yeah. why like, would you why would you open the hood that's yeah. i don't know anything about it yeah that's dumb why would you change the oil when you can just that's add dumb. it yeah, yeah when no. you buy a car <laughs> that's what they I do. teach you how to change the oil they teach you how to adjust your stereo how to put it in gear <laughs> and how to drive yeah and if anybody's wondering like what i did for air conditioning before last week i got it fixed I would sweat my fucking balls off and then roll down my window and stick my head out the window, dude, and get that, get that breeze against that sweat. Dude, I would show up to places. My shirt would be soaked. Kids in the backseat crying, sweating. He's not poor, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. I just choose to spend my money elsewhere other than a $100,000 truck like Mark over here. But mm. it is cool. Um, anyways, when my truck takes a shit, I'll buy a new one. Probably a hundred thousand dollar truck. Yeah. I get so much shit for it now. It's kind of just me being um, hard headed because I'm now yeah. I'm now I'm kind of like, well, fuck, I can't give in and get rid of it because then, like, I'll look like, like I submitted now. So now I'm kind of just like, fuck it, I'm gonna keep it now. And the people that are listening, that matters, <laughs> dude. It does to me. Oh, you're funny. I can't give up. All right, uh, Josh wanted to talk about gear stuff. Um, you know, what, what kind of firearms we carry on us on duty and ammo and stuff. I mean, we could do a, a that, whole, that like, could be a show. Yeah. A whole show. We could do a Which, whole podcast, probably like series on it. Yeah. But I mean, we just do it quick. Yeah. We can go around. Um, so I mean, other than your pen and your pocket protector. Now, yeah. yeah. Pocket <laughs> protector. Like when you were a cop, I guess. Hey, no shit. Do you, do you, do you have a pocket protector? Uh, no, I work at home. I, my, my uniform He's is a sweatshirt a, and gym a, short. So He's stay, got a cup. stapler. I don't even need pen. A it's all it's all remote. Everyone does everything on a computer. Oh, okay. So laptop, pens, monitors, um, uh, post-it notes. Uh, I do. I do have notes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, when you were a cop, what did you like? I, just give uniform, what your daily. That's what I'm trying to tell okay. you. Okay. Right. My uniform. <laughs> my uniform. I so kept, you wore you no. <laughs> you may speak. I kept rubber gloves in one pocket, and then in that same pocket, I kept a pair of baseball gloves case if i had to do something a little different i had baseball gloves like what because i i find uh, that to be gross baseball gloves yeah you uh, never wore any i like, did early on in my career when i thought it was cool until i realized it's fucking disgusting that no, you, no, no I, ne- I did not use those to touch people oh that was like if i had to jump a fence or like uh if we did a protest and i had to hold like a baton like little different things i, oh, okay. I would never use right. those gloves for like, going hands on anything oh, okay no, not all right. right that was like more like if i need to protect my hands for something a fence or Something I used to watch cops, dude, and like back in the day, and they'd fucking glove up with like these, no, you know, base, gross. and they're like searching people and drugs and shit, and then like no, taking them off, and, it, and I'm like, dude, no, that's gross, that's gross. And then rubber gloves for yeah. that purpose, All right. and then a tourniquet, and then on my belt I had my magazine, gun. How many holder. magazines? Uh, I just carried two, horizontal. My gun, uh, a pouch for extra keys that I used that I didn't, that I never carried keys in my pocket. Two handcuffs on my back a radio, a taser, and then uh, 
my magazine, the magazines. And then in my shirt pocket, I carried a cheat card that was laminated and it had all kinds of just little specific codes on it. And then additional random obscure stuff that I would learn, I would write down. And then I kept a note of certain calls that I went on, the numbers. So I could reference calls, reference type of reports, specific headings of how I started reports. Like if it's prostitution related or if it was gang related, kind of had the same template. And then a card that was laminated that had a whole bunch of vehicle codes on it. Jesus Christ. And Damn. Then, did you ever fall over? You're that from, guy, no, dude. I mean, you're talking, you're talking a piece of paper laminated. Just a Is it, are we talking like first day or are we talking like <laughs> end of your career still? End of my career. It's, you're, you're talking about a shirt pocket, like four different things in it. And then my other one was three by five cards with a pen. You're not going to like what I had carry, but okay. Uh, now or patrol? Yeah, I think patrol. Now, yeah, go patrol. now it's not, that's not fair because it's, um, they're actually similar. The only thing is, is back when I was in patrol, we, we didn't have tech vests. So I moved some things to my vest, but, uh, never was a taser guy. So, uh, left-handed, but, uh, Glock, we have 17, uh, with a tack light. I think that's important. If yeah. you, if you can, like, I, I know some departments require extra training, get a tack light. It's, it's important. I agree. Um, I use Farland holsters still to this day. I like them. And then going from there, I had let's see, what do I have? I got handcuffs up front. Um, next to that, other side, dual mags, pistol mags, and then on. See, so keep going around here. <laughs> had a, a had a OC up front. Next to that, I had my radio, and then behind that, a key clip. For uh, I didn't do the the key holder thing, just a key clip, just a little like. Oh, oh they're key clips. Yeah, yeah, they're just a hook. And then in the pocket, I'd carry normal gloves, usually uh, mechanics gloves, a bunch of a bunch of uh, latex gloves. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see what else did I have. I would sometimes carry a magazine, a rifle mag in my back pocket, hmm. just in like my wallet kind of deal. Probably not the best way of doing it, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, better than not having. <laughs> I don't think I carried a tourniquet when I was in patrol, which is now knowing what I know, completely dumb. I always had it in the car, but I don't think I carried. If I did, I think I did at some point. I carried in the sap pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's nothing special, though. What about your... Did you carry everything that he carried? Or, like, what did you carry in your uh, uniform? Pocket? I had a ma- uh, handcuff key mm-hmm. and paper and pen. Nice. So you're my style. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's all I got. Probably a can of chew in the other one. To be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, all I... I mean, whatever. I carried on my belt pretty much the same as you. Never was a taser guy. When I first started, I was a mark. Uh, and then as years went on, I'm like, this is dumb. Um, way too much, I, I thought. So I was I was a minimalist. I had my two mags. Yeah. I had, you know, obviously the radio, my flashlight. I've always been a graveyard guy, uh, Some you know, sometimes swings guy. I've never, never worked a day shift. I think I've done like maybe one rotation on days. Um, I always carried my, my big flashlight. I had a ring. That's where the sissies go. Go or, ahead. What's that? Uh, day shift. Yeah. I always carried my, my big SL20 light, and um, I would put that in the sap pocket if I needed hands-free, mm-hmm. or I would yeah. drop it if I really needed to. That's, that was always my theory. Or if I, if I needed it for other things, I could yeah. I could use it as a, the weapon, as a weapon of necessity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I had... Uh, That's why I like the big light, though. Yeah. Yeah, I would carry the big light sometimes for a part of my career, and then I just now I've got like a standard stream light that I've had for probably like 10 years. This thing still works. Um, you know, like medium sized uh, flashlight. I see a lot of guys carrying just like these really little lights, you know, probably about that big. And uh, yeah, they're bright, but I'm like, dude, that's to me, like, that's kind of hard to manipulate. Like you can't tuck it really anywhere. You can't really, I mean, like, it's hard to, there to was manipulate. a time where I actually, now that I think about it in my shirt, I had a little, little tiny light, like a pen light. Th- those are handy. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I had that but, um, <laughs> coming from the guy that fucking had everything. I, I, but I mean, like I'm under the philosophy that, If for some reason I dropped my, say, like I said, I had my big flashlight and it went to foot pursuit and I hit it on a fence and it fell down and 
Now I'm in another dark field. I have my, if I have my gun light, so if I have a gun out situation, I have that. But if not, you know, I want something else that I can go to. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was a great bird guy. So like lights were yeah. important. So you were a man, you were a cop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We c- cleared that up. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'd never even thought about writing the ticket for uh, unsecured load. Well, you're a graveyard guy. Like but graveyard I mean, cops I, I aren't supposed say, to write tickets. That's the guys you're actually, you're out hunting bad guys. That's what a graveyard doing a cop is. up in the dump. They're like, what is, <laughs> what is this guy doing? You have an unlaid safe load. Sir. I mean like that, you truly made that place safer. Well, I was brand new and, and uh, I think that was a day shift shift and that was in my agency where not a whole lot going on. So anyways, I, I carry up front double handcuff case, so two handcuffs and one one pouch. Um, and then my firearm, same thing. Um, I was a SIG guy my whole career until recently. Our whole department uh, switched to Glock. So Thank we, God they did. Yeah, so now we're Glock 17s, nine, 9 mil. I started as a SIG guy, our department. I can't talk shit about SIGs, dude. I mean, um, that thing never I mean, did me wrong. Just that first bullet is who knows where it's going. Oh, yeah, it's like. 15 pounds or 12 that's, pounds. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's why, probably I true. mean, like, okay. Yeah. The ones after that, you're like, oh, okay. The okay, first I one's a warning shot. The first shot. one, it's like, yeah. it's a warning shot. It's all shot. <laughs> and you're like, oh. <laughs> They're all, what the fuck? I'm squeezing so hard. And then yeah. it's like, boom. Oh, God, where'd that go? Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's, that's probably true, but, but whatever. Uh, okay. Anyway, so. I'm going to talk shit about Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a minimalist, man. Like, I just carry what I need to carry. Uh, carry a less lethal option on my belt. Um, and that's that's OC. And pro- probably never used it. I've never used it in my career, but. um. Yeah, that, that's all. And in my pockets, dude, all I carry are two pins, a notepad, and a handcuff key. That's it. Back in the day, I used to carry everything that you carried, you know, the laminated cards, like the cheat sheets, like all that shit. But now it's like it's all on your computer. Like yeah. I, I can pull it up on the MDT um, or, you know, I don't know. You've done it enough times. It's like, yeah. you know, unless you're like getting into something like way out of the ordinary that you've never really handled before like i could look it up but for the most part it's like all right i've been doing this long enough i i get it but uh so I, i'm a minimalist you know obviously i carry my rifle in my car uh, a couple extra James mags kyle in it right now yeah <laughs> he's a minimalist what he's a minimalist he's a minimalist sorry did i say that too many times well i wasn't quite sure i had to like snap myself so what everybody like, doesn't know what about it, after the show okay. It's just, it's a, it's a beat down sesh. Like you said this too many times. Don't say this. You don't learn. Well, I'm trying, dude. You really am what about, trying. What about footwear? Didn't we already go over this one? Yeah. This yeah. guy wore Jordans. Didn't you yeah. say you wore Jordans? Who wore uh, Dan? Oh, you wear Danners. Yeah. I wore Danners. Not yeah. as a canine handler. I didn't. Those, but I mean, Hey, listen, the boots in that locker right there. Those were my freaking canine boots. Okay. I, a lot of shit. Okay. But what I'm saying boots. is like, you're wearing the like not lightweight damage. You're wearing the oh, Acadias yeah, or whatever they are. Oh yeah, they're heavy. They're like he also, sixty pounds each. He also I'm not chasing anybody ran. anymore. Yeah, well, okay. I'm I not, guess that's a good point. I'm over I'm over chasing people on foot. I'm I'm done with that shit. Um what else you got on that yeah, list? Yeah. All right, so we're done with that? All right. Um, the Jays, though. I like the Jays. Though. I feel like we need to micromanage him a little bit more. Let's see here. Oh, uh, here's a good one. The Jays were in, in LeBron's. They're good conversation pieces. Yeah. People asked about it. You know. I don't think I'm we have Birkenstocks. With that. <laughs> black ones with black. Oh socks. no, Crocs, dude. And Crocs with black Yeah, let's socks start rolling out Crocs. <laughs> yeah, black Crocs. Be like, you want to run? Just yeah. grab that that back thing yeah. and put the yeah. heel up. Be like, let's do yeah. this. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, that I'm locked in. Yeah. How about Heelys, dude? Remember the those yes. shoes with the fucking like roller skate and the yeah. heel or whatever? I always just like that, like a cop who's like just he's wearing Crocs zing. and he's like not the the Heelys, but he's got the Crocs and he's like throws it up. He's like, see that heel strap. I'm locked in if you want to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, I work with guys that show up to work wearing those. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never, I've never worn them. Apparently, they're the most comfortable thing ever, but yeah. I don't know. I Anyways. got a joke. I'll tell you that after. Off <laughs> All right. That off-camera joke? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Must be really bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you go back in time, what would you change about your law enforcement career? Mark, you go first. Not getting bit by a dog. Not going to SWAT training (laughs) on whatever date it was that you got mauled. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. What I think I would change is I would not devote as much time to the career and I would focus more at home. And not when I say at home, I don't mean like yard and gardening. I just mean being present Mm -hmm. because I spent a lot of time at work, a lot of overtime shifts. A lot of seven days in a row or, well, I mean, and that would lead into the next week. 
Yeah. I put, a, it got us where we are today, but I put, I was that one that the department, the time I was there. Mm-hmm. And it, what I would change if I went back is I would scale that back dramatically. But do you, do you not think that that got you to the levels that you did? It did for sure. But there's, it, and it's easy to look back on, analyze it. Yeah. It did get me to what I wanted to do. And right. that's what it took. And it, you look at other people that go to, they want to be a neurosurgeon and they go to school for 11 years. And, you know, I mean, and it, yeah. all that, it, it's, it, what, it's what takes you mm-hmm. to get to that point of what Sacrifices, you want. right? Right. And yes. So now thinking that now, now again, would, would you, you go back and that? take that away? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there were time, like the specific time, like, hey, uh, can you come in and work overtime or yeah. something? And you're like, uh, you know, you miss something maybe. You know, you bring up, but like it's being that guy though. No, I, we gonna, just we just mind fucked you, huh? No, no, yeah. no you, you opened another door. So I will go. I'm going to change. I'm, that. I'm more to closing doors, but yeah, <laughs> he <laughs> is. He is. He'll fucking my, slam hey, in your with face. Every open door comes a closed door. Yeah, so, that's a good point. I would not does that make it. sense? It does, and okay. I and I and I like what you're saying, and I would not have changed that to be honest, because it did get me to where I'm at. I've got a lot of cool stories. Did a lot of neat stuff. Had access to a lot of. A lot of yeah. neat opportunities, trainings, travel. So no, I don't think I would change. So should we come back to you then? <laughs> With, <laughs> I think you want to change your answer. No, he just did. No, no, I, I mean, it's, he just did. Yeah. So okay. So is there nothing? So then, if you if that's not something you said you would you would change, but now now that you thought about it, you're like, well, that got me to where I am. So like maybe I wouldn't change that. So then, like, is there something that you would change, like indefinitely? No, I I don't think there is now at this point. I was pretty fortunate all along. I don't think I was ever unfortunate. Because that's my answer. My answer would be like. Mine's nothing. Like, I mean, I I, I literally. I I mean, if you want to talk about like maybe something small and very specific. Yeah. That I can't think of right now. Like, have I done stupid things that I was like, man, that turned out okay. And that's how you learn. That's how you learn. But even, even have I done stupid things more than once? (laughs) <laughs> and then like, man, that worked out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah, I know. I mean, have I, you know, driven too fast and been told and then Done driven it. too fast again? Yeah. But other than that, like as far as dramatic things that, that led me to where I'm at right now, because everything I think led me to where I'm at. Yeah, for sure. And the people that I work with um, and the relationships that I have more I have. No. So, no, I, I really no regrets. Wouldn't change anything. Like honestly, if it was if it was completely my way, if I would have been like, this is this is like if I could tell the future, I would have done K nine, which is something that I always wanted to do. But I I kind of went off and went a different path. And once I hit that that other thing, it was kind of hard or kind of weird to go back to K nine. Yeah, that opened doors to like so. Way other but things. but do I regret doing it? Not at all. But if I if you could have told me that I could have done K nine and then you know maybe after K nine I could have done uh, SWAT for a little bit and then moved on to detective thing from there and then moved there and moved where I've done now yeah maybe but but that's not a realistic yeah. thing to to say yeah I mean aside from marrying my ex wife um, <laughs> oh career um. <laughs> I don't really have any oh, <laughs> personal life. Damn. Oh, yeah. Damn. Sorry. I misread Shit, that. We got, yeah. like, we got like a 10 episode series of regrets yeah. and personal life. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I hope she out. hears that. <laughs> um, no, seriously. Okay. Career wise. I, I honestly, like I thought about that and like, I don't have any regrets because like I have done shit that I regret. I've done things that like I got in trouble for. I've, I've done things where definitely made some hard mistakes, fell, yeah. fell flat on my fucking face. Um, literally I've fallen flat on my face. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I don't regret that shit. Like, I'm glad that I did all those things. Right. Because like, that's how you, that's how you learn. And, and I, I, I mean, I've gone so as far as to do things like I've, I have veered way out of my lane sometimes. And, and I've got told like, Hey, stay in your lane. Um, but I'm glad I've done those things because I mean, if you're not doing those things, like you're never going to grow and get better. And so honest to God, like that, I know maybe that's corny, but I don't have a whole lot of regrets, you know, uh, um, in my career. I'm glad I've done everything I've done. You know, I mean, it's short. Like, it goes quick, right? Like, I just hit my 15th anniversary last week when we graduated the academy. 
And, uh, dude, I can't believe it's been 15 years. Like, you know, I'm on the downward slope of, of their career, you know? So I don't know. We'll see what comes up next for me, but, um, man, I would not be doing the things I'm doing today outside of my job yeah. if it weren't for the things that I've experienced in my career, and yeah. bad and, and I, good. And I also think that if, if you're looking within and you're like, I wish I would have done this, I wish I would have done that, and you have a lot of regrets, I think me, that's on you. Yeah. Like that's uh, like. You know who I think probably has the most regrets, honestly, in, in, in our profession? Guys yeah. that just fucking want to climb Chief. the ladders that's yeah. so fast. Like that's all they're thinking about is the end game and they get there so quick and then they're Whoa. inexperienced. They make bad decisions. And it's like, that's happening because you, you are in a position that you got way too quick and you didn't get that experience. Like we all yeah. have, and, and you didn't make those mistakes. You, just, you know, from talking to my dad who I'm, if, you know, we all know who have listened to the show. He we had him on here. someone in the nuts. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's go done, listen he's to his episode. Things, but, but talking to him, he growing up or well, not growing up, but once I got on the screen, he said, do not ruin a great career by promoting. It is, is what dude. he told me. And I he, mean, and he, and he's like, that was me. Like I did the promotion. So I think what you, what you said probably would be what he would say is I promoted too fast. Yeah. I, hmm. I wholeheartedly think that now there are some guys in this job that don't give a shit about all that. But they don't care goal, about, but exactly. They don't care you, about all the fun stuff. They're, they're like, I want to be chief. Yeah. Their end game and, is like, I want to be a sheriff or chief or captain or whatever. Yeah. Like I want to be at the top because a, for a lot of people, it's status for some people it's money, like whatever the case may be. So a lot of people, it's politics because you know, when you're a chief or, or even a captain or probably a sheriff but, or under sheriff, like a lot of those guys like go into the political bad, world. Like a lot of it's leadership though, too. They just want to be yeah. leaders. Like uh, yeah. there's a respectful side to it. It's not all bad. And some people have a really, really good ideas. And at a patrol level, you can't implement those. And at a sergeant's mm -hmm. level, you can't implement those ideas. And some people, they promote quickly, but they flourish because they have bigger b capabilities of thinking that way. Yeah. Yeah. We've all seen yeah. leaders above us who, both, both sides. where you're like, you scratch your head. You're like, how are you in charge right now? Like you don't even know what you're doing. And that's because like they're Kyle's the guys. Team. That that's what they do all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Kyle's like, or his team. <laughs> hey, you know what? To be honest, like if I, I, I think I probably should have went a little longer with before I promoted to sergeant, you know, I was really loving what I was doing in K9. But, you know, I mean, 15 years on, I think that's a solid time, time, time to, to move on. Yeah, to, to move on. I mean, if you're not, yeah. That rev limiter can only be pegged for so long. And, and I did it for so long. And that, that, um, that shit eats at you. And that, that's when your family life, your personal life, that's yeah. when all that stuff starts to deteriorate. And that's just not, not healthy at all. Um, so, Anyways, that answers that. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being an officer in your hometown? I like that question when I saw that. I, I really, I thought that was, that was good. I never, wor I never worked in any of my hometowns. We'll just. I did. And, I can uh, share that. I wouldn't. Just, it wasn't. In, the reason I didn't is not because I thought of the hometown aspect. It was just, I grew up in smaller towns. And it was just nothing that I really wanted to, to do. Yeah. So I wanted a bigger, higher action packed, more opportunity, uh, agency. So that was not my hometown. Yep. Me too. Same exact. So, but what you, you did, right? I did. And I'll tell you what, like, I, that's why I appreciate that question. Um, I'm not sure if this guy's thinking about doing that. Um, I, I worked in the town that I grew up in as well. Like not only lived there, but I grew up there. Right. Small and it was a too. small town. Yeah. So I, I knew a lot of people. Um, I would I would say, don't do it. That's my own personal opinion. But, and, but what about the pros to it? Like, I mean, a small like we're, we're talking small town. Okay, so, good point. So let's talk small town, and you work at a small town, and you're like, hey, this neighborhood or whatever. You're like, I know we're having an issue in this neighborhood. Say, you're like, I know four people that live in that neighborhood personally, not because I'm a cop or something. And you can walk into there, and you can you can have some rapport, and you can. People can respect you or disrespect you, whatever. But you can be like, "Hey, I know them. I I know, I know the back roads to get to this place. I know when, because I ran from the cops. I know this is where I'm going to run." <laughs> that did happen. Yeah. Um. You you actually that's a really good point. And so I, I here's the thing. Okay, this is this is my personal opinion because I work with a couple guys, at least one, uh, Bill, who 
grew up in the city I work in and like, he's proud to, to work there and, and, and serve his community. He grew up in, and I respect well, that. that. That's the true service of community. Correct. He's serving his community. My problem was, and maybe it was due to my age because I was so young is like, I was running into, into folks I went to high school with and college with. And it was like, maybe because my town was too small. Maybe I should preface no, that. I, I think that, I think that maybe not even, yeah, I mean, yours was small. I think that was a factor, but you were so young. Like, you think about your law enforcement encounters when you were in your early 20s. Like, that's the most encounters that I most just people feel, have, right? I just yeah. feel like working in the town that you live in, it really jades. It jades your community that, like, you grow up in because you know where the bad guys live. You know where the bad shit goes on. Like, even if it's a nice community, like, that is going to draw that out of you. But you're a cop. You're going to you're gonna figure that out anyway, in one way or another. They're like, they're, right, but I want to... Like, so say say the local agency shows up to your neighbor's house right now, and you, they, or they come and you're talking to them, or you make friends with somebody <laughs> here, which I think we all have a friend or two or know somebody who works in our local agency. Oh, yeah. You're gonna hit them up anyway and be like, "Hey, what what's going on in my neighborhood?" And they're yeah, gonna tell you anyway. That's if right, but I'm saying if so. Like, I guess what I mean to say is like, what I don't know doesn't hurt. And so, you know, I kind of want to live in like this this fucking bubble, bubble of like, I, I don't know what goes on in this town where we live, and we live in a nice community, right? Like, yeah, but be, you, me and Billy live here. I think if you uh, but, have, if you grow up in that town like you did, you're exposed to different people. You run into those people. There's, I, I would think that there would be different pressures. And I wouldn't want to deal with that. I would rather be on the outside. And you can still have those. Yeah, and that's another negative thing to it. Yeah, you could still have those relationships. Yeah, but they might buy you a beer. Or, or they might or not. They, or they, yeah, they might not. <laughs> and, and it would change. But I think you could still have those relationships with the community. And that's back in the day where cops worked the same beat for years. It was out of the patrol car walking around. And I, don't, and, and I hope people still do that. But that's when you learn... You know, yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't know what the, I, I don't have like an answer for you. Like, I I'm not, not going to say it. my answer is I would not do it. Yeah. I'm not going to say yay or nay. I'm just going to say I've done it. it. It was not for me. I, and I did have some of the issues that he just talked about. And that was running into people you've arrested and like going to the store with your family. And like, yeah. I had people come no up way. to me and be like, do not do that. Hey, officer Schoberg, like I, I'm, I'm off of drugs now. And you got your like girlfriend or wife and you're like, okay, like, I don't know, dude. Like, I just don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah, I want to no. come home, be in the in a city where like I don't have to worry about that. Well, you can and, never turn but, it off there. But my thing is, is like now that I've done some of the, the, I still have some more that I want to accomplish in law enforcement. But say it, I've done everything that I wanted to do, and I just kind of want to start chilling out. Right, I've no no desires to promote or anything. I just want to go back and be a patrol cop and chill out. I think that. Working in my community, the community that I live in, would be the most rewarding that I could think of. And that's where I'd want to work if, if I had that choice. Hmm. Just because, like... Lots of different perspective. Like, because, that's like, all. I mean, you're at a, such a... You know, we all worked in high-speed, um, high higher crime yeah. areas. And at some point, it's nice to be like, okay, yeah, let's chill pump out. the brakes. Yeah, I'd, no, like to, I'd like to go to the barking dog call. Yeah, I've never yeah. had a barking dog call. I've never had that. Like our yeah, well, dispatch, where we work, like we don't go to stuff like that. Our dispatch would take care of that. Long but my old that. agency, we did. But that's what I'm saying is like, I kind of can see that, Hey, that would be kind of be nice too. Yeah. Like to go to that yeah. barking dog call and be like, Oh, it's, it's so-and-so's dog. He's, He's always barking at this hour, and you know I've talked to them several times. Yeah, you, whatever, and have but have an involvement. So how about and this? Be able, to, be able to do follow ups okay. on, on a barking dog. Yeah, how about you would this? Make a bigger, you would make a bigger difference and a more satisfying difference to the people that you're going to that house, and for you to know that because you would make a difference. Going to a sh gang shooting, you're not really making a difference. You're yeah. just responding to a call. But that's what I'm saying. Is yeah, that's I why like it, I like that. Idea. And, and I guess maybe it's not your community necessarily. A smaller, in a smaller okay. department. Yes. Right? Yeah. So how about this? How about you don't work in the community you live in, but maybe one next door where it's just as know. nice I'd, or it's I'd a nice still community. be vested in it. Like um, I always, right. I always well, thought, I always thought growing up, like or not growing up in, in my law enforcement career, that if I would have worked at the agency, my local agency that I grew up in, the the town that I actually grew up in as a kid. Not where I live now, but as I grew up as a kid, I would do a great. Shit, job. I'm thinking about going there. <laughs> I would do a great job because I know. I know a lot about the department. I get paid. I know a lot about the community. Yeah. And I know a lot about, like, 
I, I would say probably a lot of their calls have to do with okay. So maybe later bullshit, in your career, which is something that I was familiar with misdemeanor bullshit. Maybe later in your career, then no, now that you've done no, all the because, fun shit. But no, because like, uh, what am I gonna like? I'm gonna go through my department and do it. You know, like I, okay, I feel so I, I feel like that if uh, once I've done what I've done and I'm completely done, which is probably in the next five years, where I'm done with the chasing and all that and the, and i decided to go promote yeah i think i still have something to add to my department but you yeah no you do but only have the ability to promote in your department right you could not go to a smaller or another agency most i mean most are, of the time most of the time you would not get hired over there as but a sergeant. but also knowing what yeah, i know and do. growing up in the culture that i did of law yeah. enforcement to take the culture that i have now and go to another agency i'm sure i would hate it yeah I'm just, that's just a guess that I have. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know how old this person is or what, if they have any experience, I don't know, but that, who knows, but, uh, follow up with us. If like, what are you thinking? Um, all everyone, I mean, it doesn't have to be this person follow up. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of listeners that work in their community. Yeah. I, and and I'm and sure there's some, like you have the experience of working in a s- small, small town community. I'm sure yeah. we have plenty of listeners out there that grew up in maybe very bad neighborhoods yeah. and they're now working in that neighborhood and they're probably are so rewarded because they're like, look, I'm actually, I know the that's bad true. that happened in this neighborhood that's true. and I'm yeah. actually doing something to change it. Cause that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate yeah, that's community service. Outlook. So there's another perspective of it, but uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of cops that listen to this. Like you, please, you guys like drop comments in these videos because a lot of other people read those and, and you're, you know, it's also educational. Like if you have something to offer about like what we're saying or answer one of these questions on your own, like what you think, like put it in, in the comments because someone can learn from it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's so th- beat another dead horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick it while it's down. Call that one again. <laughs> I don't think so. It was good. I mean, nah, well, it's good. Like I was different getting person. passionate there for a minute. So, no, so what you're saying, Billy, is you're going to apply to to where we live now. You're going to go apply to their department. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I, just I said, said that. I said I'm not. Oh, okay. Just, I heard you. Yeah. Fine. I paid, I paid Fine. Attention. Next door. Yeah. All right. He's trying to micromanage. I, no, I'm city. staying. I'm staying in my department. All I right. will retire from my department. He said he's going to promote. He's all right. captain. If you're listening to this, I'm staying. <laughs> um. All right. So this guy, uh, we'll give him a shout out. K9 underscore Odin underscore Oshkosh. Uh, he's a uh, he's got a lot of followers on Instagram. Obviously, he's a canine handler. Uh, you guys, if you're in the canine community, go follow him. He puts out a lot of good videos and posts and stuff on his Instagram account. I like I like some of the stuff that he posts. Um, he asked us a question, and that is, what's your opinion uh, and prediction with behavioral health officers within the department? We kind of touched on that on the last episode. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll give you my perspective. Like our, I, I know actually all three of our departments have implemented that, where we have a behavioral health uh, social worker or clinician that is teamed up with a officer who has gone to extra training to, to be able to go to respond to those calls, like the mental health type calls. Um, and the behavior health worker is the one that is able to place these folks on mental health evaluations, uh, or I'm sorry, mental health holds. And they have been like really beneficial to our department mm-hmm. because Number one, well, a couple of reasons. A, you're freeing up the patrol guys to go handle patrol related calls. Any mental health halls that calls that come out, that unit with the behavioral health social worker responds to those calls. So they're getting like the proper probably treatment that they need. Yeah. Um, someone that knows how to deal with them, but at the same time, they have a an officer with them with them there to protect them as well. Um, and where I have found that it, the they have become most beneficial is I think every department has those chronic like 911 callers or mental health people who call like and claim some wacky stuff uh, right and they call like over and over and over and over and, and like pisses, pisses dispatch off and um, not a lot we can do with them at the time um, but what we do is we you know if they're not working we can shoot them an email because they're embedded within the department and they do all the follow-up with them and they will either house them get the mental health treatment Um, but they're the experts. So having them embedded in your department, like we do riding around with an officer going to those calls, I I think it's a game changer. I think every department should probably have it. I can't think of one bad thing. I can't either. They stay in their lane Mm -hmm. and they do like at least ours. Yeah. Um, but like, that's like, 
if you wanted to give me a doctor that was rolling around with cops, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, sure. I don't see the advantages. Like there is one walls, but I'm just saying is like, yeah, I mean, I can't, you can't say a bad behind it other than the cost. Right. But if you're not, if you're not covering the cost, and I don't know, doctor, I, I but truly, what I'm saying, yeah, I don't know what the cost is. That's is. another resource. You sure. know, we, we talked about tool belt earlier. Yeah. Um, this is, this is a tool in our tool belt and we have access to it. It's great. Yeah, for sure. I, that's a great question. And honestly, like, I think this is the way of the future in law enforcement. Um, Billy mentioned it last episode and it was, um, you know, that we were going back and forth about like, Oh, sh- sh- you know, should civil- because there's this thought of like civilians should like form their own group and like only civilians should go to these calls. And, and like you, you had said, like, that's dangerous. Like you have to have a cop there because you, we know a lot of these people can be super violent um, you know, they can go from like zero to a hundred. Next thing you know, they're like arming themselves with a, a weapon, a gun or, or whatever. Um, so what, I mean, beyond that, like you brought up a, something that just made me think about something is n- totally off topic here a little bit, but so say we, we have citizens do this. We have laws put in place in probably every state within this nation is that, you have to be a law enforcement officer to do an arrest. I mean, there's citizens arrests and everything, mm. but there's certain factors and everything. Mm. Yeah. You don't want to give, honestly, you don't want to give that power to the public because it can be so abused so quickly and yeah. used so poorly Yeah, that you want, you want checks, balances, you want training, you want everything on that. Mm. So, um, you know, that, that's just something that I thought about real quickly. Yeah, no, it's a good point. So, um, it, I, Look, California has gone that direction, and I, I think we're only probably amplifying it. We're, we're putting more of these people out there. Um, it, it's should. worked out great. Yeah, yeah. we should. So if, We if, need more. I, I can tell you that. Like, we <laughs> have very, very limited. Yeah, so if you're in a state where, like, you don't have this stuff, like, I don't know, maybe maybe look into it. Look into what California is doing. I mean, that's probably one good thing that we're doing in California. Um, I think we're doing a lot of great things. I disagree. Yeah, I mean, there's... <laughs> well, I, mean, long, I mean, I think... There is a lot I mean, of goo- I, I goofy am, shit that we do too. But I mean, I will say that we are all probably jaded and we're all, uh, you know, everyone thinks they're the best, but I, I do think that California law enforcement has great training. I think we set and, the standard for and sure. We set a lot of standards. Yeah. Um, you know, do we granted, do we want to be able to do some more things sometimes? Yeah. But yeah, where we when, fall when short you look at it, you're like, ah, yeah. Where, where California falls short is just the lacks the lackadaisical laws and and people not going to jail or prison like they should. I mean, that's why we have a lot of issues that we have. But that's that's a whole nother topic. As far as the mental health thing goes, like if your state's not doing this stuff, maybe look into see what what California's done. It's worked out great for us, and um, we're we're going to keep building it. Um, you know, so I hope that answers that question. Um, Here's a funny one. Uh, what's your guys' favorite donut? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one in front of me? The one in front. Yeah. Chocolate. Chocolate bar. Got him. Chocolate em. bar? Yeah. I like, yeah, that's uh, probably my favorite too. Don't or a chocolate. Maple. No, I don't know. Maple. I'm not a maple. Yeah. Actually, maple's like. Billy likes the one with the with the uh, cream in the middle, you know? He likes to bite into that. And that sh- no. Yeah, that custard oozing out. Like it just. Have you ever had cronuts, though? No. Uh, oh, cronuts? They're like, they're like croissant based. No. Don't. Oh, they're light and fluffy. Never heard Dave, of it. If you're a listener out there and you get the opportunity to try some cronuts. Where do you, can you get them at any donut shop? Or no, not any, but like there's a few around here that do it. Wow. Well, no, I have not. Yeah. I don't want to give any, any plugs or something, but I'll tell you where you can go after. Okay. Have you ever gone to a, this is not part of the question, but have you gone to a donut shop like in uniform? Oh yeah. yeah 4 a.m. I, I have. On one. Have you, you have. Who hasn't gone to a donut yeah, shop? I, some people refuse. They're like not doing it. I'm like, who gives a shit? I work graveyards. Like, so like the whole thing with donuts and why cops and donuts are always like the joke. First of all, the joke is dumb because everyone loves donuts. It is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is okay. stupid. But like the reason that it came about is that we work in communities late at night mm-hmm. and the first place to open usually or sometimes shops, like 2 a.m., would be the donut shop, and they would open, and they would start making their donuts. So the cops would go over there, and friendly with the community, the the donut shop guy or person would be like, yeah, here, have a donut or something. Hang yeah, out for a little bit. Have some coffee and a donut. Coffee yeah. and a donut, yeah. And that's that's why it came about. Yeah. That cops love donuts. 
Everyone loves donuts. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that because that's a little is history super lesson. True. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for that question. Um, that was good. That was really out of the box. Um, coffee or energy drinks? Iced coffee. Your coffee guy? Iced coffee. Iced coffee. Right. Mark, I remember one time. Coffee black. That's me. No, actually, this, I forgot about this until you just said that. Mark used to be a barista at Starbucks. Am oh I wrong? Oh, my God. I was partner of the month. God. Yeah. I remember. Partner of the month? You mean employee? No, no, no. We were partners. How were you partners? Did you own it? Uh, You could get, you could buy shares. Okay. Did you? part of a cup fund. So yeah, I was a partner. You were a partner. Yeah. So you own this Starbucks or were partial owner Technically, I have stock in it, so I do. I am part of it. Oh, okay. (laughs) So it's like, it's like those Green Bay Packer fans that, you know, you can buy a stock of the Packers and be like, I own those. I own, I'm an NFL team. I'm part owner. Yeah. It's a nice way of, you're broke as hell. Instead of just saying, Hey, you're an employee, you're a partner. It's a, Mm. it's a, it's a brainwashing concept. Yeah. It sounds really lame. It was one and embarrassing. One of the most fun jobs I've had. Oh my God. I remember one time I was going to to Starbucks. I, I think we were in the Academy and I'm like, Hey dude, you want me to get you something or whatever? Um, and, and he sends me this, this disgusting f- total female drink. Like and I was like, long. what he, the text fuck? Was like this long. I was like, he I'm not saying that dude. And it, he even had, I swear, dude, tell me I'm wrong. You had a certain degree temperature you wanted it at. Well, yeah. I don't want to get burned. My I mouth. was like, what? <laughs> I refuse. I was like, I I'm I, not I, saying lost that respect for you. Well, yeah. no, because he asked me what I wanted and I told him. Okay. God, I was expecting like I don't know a coffee with cream and sugar. It was like, dude, it it was embarrassing. You, you were going to Starbucks. Coffee black. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's how you do it. He's that guy, dude. I, sw- I swear. No, just iced coffee. That's it. That's all I'll drink. Well, not not this day. It was something different. Well, and yeah, it was, was like then. something crazy. I was like, I'm not I'm not fucking I ordering that. I was excited. <laughs> Kyle, you I'm all, I'm yeah, little, I'm all, yeah. someone else was paying. I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was excited. It's for my girlfriend. Just kidding. It's for my buddy. He's a dude. Um, <laughs> anyways, that reminded me of that. Oh, thank uh, you. I'm Macy, an energy Macy drink. Macy won't let me order her coffee because it's. Be wrong. It's just. Total yeah, it's like, like, she asks you for I'm something. I'm like, I don't understand these words. I know. Is, I'm like, is, is that even a thing? Like, like I yeah. don't understand. Oh. And it's funny because like you order something crazy like that, and they and the barista is like, oh okay, and they like totally know exactly what yeah, you're talking about. You're like, like what the fuck? Crazy. They write it down in like abbreviations too. You're like, what the fuck did you just write yeah, there? I, I don't know. How do you? All remember? of America has been doing these drinks for like twenty years. I don't. It's yeah, crazy, no, dude. I haven't. <laughs> how do you even know? Like, wh- how do you know what that even is? Like, where do you even come up with? what these concoctions are and how do people know what the fuck they are? That's what blows my mind because you're bored and you make stuff like is is here's like when I get a little crazy, I'll do a sweet cream nitro cold brew. Yeah. Why not do that every day? But I mean, that's, uh, that's like three, three things you do. These yeah, people yeah, out here do like things like, because a, that's not that healthy for you. Okay. That's good enough. Dude. Okay. <laughs> if I'm at work, yeah. like, like black coffee there, like if, the, okay, caffeine's not that healthy for you, or yeah, or arguable. to a certain extent. Yeah, but if you have one a day, maybe. But like a black yeah, coffee is, yeah, is probably other than tea. It's fine. It's good. But you're, and that's you're right. You're talking about a bunch of stuff in it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm an energy drink guy, and I'm all not about the, I'm all about the rock star, dude. Yeah. You drink nothing but chemicals. Yes, that's fine, dude. Do I'm, you know? Do you know where rock star? I'm from? answering the question, and the question is coffee or energy drink. And I'm an energy drink guy, and I like rock star. Just the regular. Normal, original 80, rock 85 star. grams of sugar. Probably. Gets it done, dude. Actually, you know what's crazy? I think it actually makes me more tired <laughs> because I get tired after I drink one, but uh, <laughs> I still stupid. drink them. <laughs> you're stupid. Dude, you know what works really well on, on like Graves is those little five-hour energy shots. Those wow. work incredibly well. And coffee does, too. Yeah. I think if you scale I back. I drink coffee, too. I, I, I drink God. both. Scale back all that. Okay. I mean, my, and? my graveyard was... was Black coffee in Copenhagen, so I mean, like that can't be any better. Yeah. But, yeah. I, no, I'm not doing that. I tried that shit once and barfed my fucking brains out. That was a traumatizing experience. Hey, to each his own. If I smell that stuff, dude, I'll puke. Oh, I'm gonna start chewing again then. <laughs> I mean, I work. I'm just with gonna a, pack a big old lipper right. I and just have before, your cup right just here. like right I, here. Yeah. I work with a bunch of dudes. That same cup as this. <laughs> no, I had a bad. Just bad that right there. That. Four not. shots fired cups out here. One's your spitter. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. 
Like these are. Little I don't have a problem so with that. Them. It's just the smell of. of yeah, but I'm gonna put it right here, yeah. right in front of you. Well, well then I'll fucking throw up all over you. That's that's fine. All right, do it. All right. All right, we're moving on from that one. I want to be sponsored by Copenhagen. Please yeah, please send rare. me a can and I will chew it. Okay, this is so our last question. Last question. Let's get through this one here. Um, this one is... Uh, can you read I, it in like a fun voice? Yeah, I take my psych exam this Thursday. Any suggestions? Well, first <laughs> thing is... Psycho. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to message you privately because this isn't going to be coming out by then. So uh, I'll hit you up on the side. But for anybody else interested, yeah, what he just said... Uh, don't be a psycho period. Uh, g- no, but seriously, like psych exams, like those are no fun. They're easy. Yeah. They're not hard that like, you just have to answer these questions that are fucking monotonous. And they ask you the same question over and over again, but written different florist, ways. A race car driver. How about this? What, are, what was, uh, there was four of them. Can that's you, what I had. I was like a fucking race car driver. Yeah. yeah so duh. Are, you, are you happy? And then like, Two hours later, like, are you still happy? And you're like, no, yeah. I'm not fucking happy right now. This is irritating. Yeah, so um, those are, I mean, they're they're not tricky. You just have to be honest. Um, and just be confident. Just I'm, stick with your answer. Hear about this. What are the, can you guys recall, like, I know you just brought up one, but, like, what Did are the, some of the weird. One? Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that. I can't remember. They're all the same. There was four. There was four. There was a bunch that are super huh. weird. It was race car driver was one of them because I was like, Fuck yeah! Who doesn't want to be a race? I car said driver? Mark's all. Mark said florist. florist. Guaranteed. I know he said mortician. <laughs> Mark, I don't remember those questions. I Ma- remember they asked you what a why is a shallow brook so loud. I would have raised my hand. I don't know what a shallow brook is. Like I a, don't. Uh, I don't either. A shallow stream, like a little stream. Okay. Why is a shallow brook was so was loud? one of the answers? I have no clue. No, I think they just wanted to see what your mindset was. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. they are they do ask you yeah. some crazy yeah. weird questions and I and you and I like you read it and you're like, where are they going with this? Like And then the one it's on one bizarre. Did you guys, yeah, the, you, yeah, oh the yeah. One on one there's yeah. like I've heard stories of uh of a phone ringing in the background. Yeah. And they like manually make it ring yeah, just they just to make see it ring in the background while you're talking. Yeah, while yeah. you're talking. Huh. Just see, just see a pissed reaction. Off. Yeah. Like, are you going to answer that? Let's do this. Let's talk. <laughs> let's real quick talk about, let's just break down the process of a psych exam because actually now that we're talking about it, yeah, it it's quite, question. it's quite interesting actually how they do it. I don't know. I don't know like the, the ins and outs of it and, and like the intricateness of it, but like there's obviously a reason they do it the way they do. Um, but you go in and you go take this written test, which takes pr- about it's three like, hours. It's like 400 questions or it's something. Not Dude, I, no, it's I think fill it's... In the, you're just answering fill in little, the bubble. Yeah. little questions. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you sad? Are you always happy? Are you sometimes sad? But then they'll ask it again yeah, later. Yeah, differently. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I remember, different. I remember at the very end of mine, one, one of them was like, how, like, how angry are you right now? And it was like, kind of like an answer of like medium mild. And then like the last one was like, you want to bash your head into yes, the desk, <laughs> um, <laughs> stab your pencil in your eye yes. or something like that. It's like, motherfucker, like I, I am fucking angry right now, but I know if I bubble that in, you're going to say <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah, psycho. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So answer that. I don't know. Answer those questions. Uh, Smile, appropriately, oh, but semi truthfully. <laughs> Yeah, you you got yeah. Like I had a buddy. Like be that, rational and just be like, dude, I get what they're trying to do here. I had yeah. a buddy that openly admitted, like, to the and we'll get to what happens after, like, the doctor interview, and he's like talking about anger or whatever, like, because apparently he bubbled in too many things that made him se- seem like he had an anger problem, mm-hmm. and then he's like, he admitted, like, yeah, one time I was playing video games, and and he was already a cop. He's trying to lateral to another agency, and he and he tells the guy like. I got pissed off at the freaking game. It was like Call of Duty or some shit and fucking throws his remote at the TV and breaks it. And, and the doctor like failed him. He's like, yeah, you have an anger problem. Like, right. don't, you don't say that shit. Like <laughs> some things maybe you just want to keep to yourself. Um, but, so Kyle's but, per- saying that you should uh, lie on it. No, no, you yeah. don't lie. Uh, no, nope. so, so absolutely don't lie. You're don't lie right now. Anything. So after you take all those bubble questions, you fill in all the blanks. Yeah. Which, which takes like three hours. Yeah. It does take yeah. a very long time. There's almost like a thousand questions. Yeah. Then there's the, and the, the questions are weird. The one-on-one with a, yeah, it's the doctor. professional doctor. And you that's, know what, I mean, that's, you want to know what one the question he asked me, and I don't know if it was because of my age when I was getting hired yeah. With Grass Valley, I was 20 or I was like 19 at the time. No, like this is no bullshit. He asked me, you're 
pretend you're a police officer. You get called to a bar fight. Like I've been so pretending you're since I was two. Yeah. I'm Still like, am. yeah, I'm like, oh, I get to pretend. Um, you respond to a bar fight. You get there and there's a bunch of naked guys fighting in the middle of the street. What would you do? That was what he asked me. I was like, what? A bunch of naked dudes fighting in the road at a bar, uh, at a bar fight call. I, the only thing I can think of is like, he was expecting me to be like, eh, like that's great. Like some yeah, immature, sure, answer. immature answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's smart. On I that. immediately yeah. kind of caught on to it and I'm like, I would, you know, I'd handle, I would handle it appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> but on everyone. Join them. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd fucking jump in and join them. Duh. Like that sounds like a party. <laughs> yeah. Are they fu- play fighting? Uh, Are they role like, playing? Yeah. Well, to get to their level, I would tell them to stop. <laughs> if they didn't listen to me, I would take off all my clothes and then tell them. Listen, to stop. I would de-escalate the situation and I would strip my uniform off and and go that route. No, I, I don't remember what I said, but like I was like, that is the weirdest question dude yeah i just thought my, about my buddy i just thought about something i'm gonna go back a few steps here he made fun of you for working at Aber- or at uh i knew Starbucks. this was gonna yeah. get brought up he worked yeah. at abercrombie the best part is i'm the editor of this dude i can just edit this part out no <laughs> i'm just like, I mean, like like i just that just hit me like did you watch the abercrombie and in fitch oh documentary? no i wanted to on netflix no so, dude, you can't bash on me, but then be like, "Oh, I just watched the you documentary." Just on on him. You just bashed on him. You didn't even. You, he did worse than bash. I, I, I'm going. I'm Kyle. I'm, I went back to being the dead horse. I even went backwards. I walked away from the horse. Dealing with a bunch of Kyles right now. Okay. All right. Anyways, um, you have any other questions? So the psych thing is strange. It's a very strange experience. That's I just don't know how to, to be put there it. for a long time yeah. and yeah. be a little irritated and a be little a, and a caught off guard. Yeah, uncomfortable. uncomfortable and caught off guard. But that. Yeah. But their goal is to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. To see how you handle being uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah you know, if I one. could offer anybody a tip, it, it would be, um, and I've read this somewhere else, like, don't go on YouTube or Google, like, how to, like, try to beat these processes. Like, no. don't do not do that. Like, just with no knowledge of what's going on, like, just roll into these things. Like, yeah. th- the process of getting hired to be a cop. Don't try to, like, set yourself up to, like, beat it or anything like that. Like, you're not going to. Just roll into it and... Do as you would do. Like don't. I did almost ten years of construction before I did all this stuff. So if yeah. I can pass this stuff with that background, yeah. If a nineteen year old could pass it, well, I mean, but a nineteen yeah. year old hasn't done a whole lot. Yeah. No, I didn't do shit. I dude. mean, I was I was twenty seven. So yeah. you know, that's that had a long time, and I worked with some some rough people to do some bad yeah. things, and yeah. yeah. But if you, you know, try, it's and not manip- it's not that bad. It really isn't. And if you try and manipulate it and you think you're beating them, that you're going to lose because... And they know that. Like, honest, they, they've seen so many people come through. They know who's honest and who's not. Yeah. Listen, when they print those report exams out, like, they will seriously... They will specifically put on there, like, you know, tried to lie, lie during the whatever. Like, yeah, they dude, know. Like, yeah. they know based on your answers whether you're being truthful or not. Oh, and if you're based going on your to multiple agencies, yeah, they're going to talk to other agencies and yeah, they're going to they be like... That's funny because he said this on yeah. there, and yeah. you're gonna be like, "Yeah, don't do that. You'll freaking screw yourself." Yeah. Um, so, all PHA, right. PHA, the personal history. What was it? PHS, yeah, PHS, personal history, history statement. statement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, what, you fill that thing out once and turn it in. Copy it. That's it. <laughs> like, there's no adjusting anything from yeah. there. Um, okay. Appreciate the questions. They were good. These were yeah. good questions, actually. Yeah. Um, thank you. And, uh, you know, again, guys, listen, if you guys are enjoying this stuff, please pass this stuff around, share it on social media, help us out. Um, we do have some new shirts in for the summertime. Um, they're not all, we can get different colors too, I think. So I was just going to say, we got, Black is hot. I, I, we've yeah. gotten so many requests for hoodies and t-shirts and, and stuff like way more than I think we thought we were to the point where, um, it, it's kind of overwhelming trying to keep track of who wants what and size and everything. So what we're going to try to do is, well, what we're going to do is if you head over to uh, fieldsurvivaltraining.com, which is uh, our training website where we offer our training classes, uh, we'll throw on these T-shirts and hoodies and maybe we'll try to get some hats made. But, um, you know, there'll be a variety. Yeah, koozies. We'll have a variety of sizes, uh, colors, and um, you guys will be able to purchase some straight from the website, fieldsurvivaltraining.com. Give us a little bit of time to get that set yeah, up. Be patient at first. Cause <clears throat> yeah. So we're trying to get this stuff out to you guys. I know a lot of you have asked for this stuff and, and I'm trying to do the ordering 
um, get to get them made and then, you know, try to ship these out to, to everybody that's wanting them. So, um, thank you for, for wanting to support the podcast. Like, fuck, we love it. That, yeah. that's, that's awesome. We will get you this stuff. Like, like Billy just said, just be a little patient with us. Uh, we're trying to work out the kinks. Um, and then this stuff will just be available online to you and you can hop on the website and get yeah, it. Be patient with Kyle. Cause I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Like, uh, I'm the one doing it. So, um, please. And we do work full time. So, well, do you? I mean, um, you, you guys had a, a message from somebody you wanted to give a thanks to? Oh, uh, Zach? My first message on yeah. Instagram hit me yeah. up. These guys were pumped. They're like, we got yeah. a message. It took me a bit. He was pretty funny because he's yeah. like, if you could actually figure this out. Which, which is true. He's not. Which is true. And I'm yeah, not he's sure not how lying. long it was actually there. But I did figure it out and message back. It was pretty cool. So thanks, dude. Yeah, thanks to everybody. I mean, honestly, like we get a lot of uh, messages or, or, you know, I'll get a lot of messages on Instagram and emails, <laughs> whatever, but it's in support of all of us. Like, um, you know, we, we seriously appreciate it. Like we don't take those lightly. A lot of people reach out to us and tell us, you know, how much they appreciate the podcast. Um, you know, they're learning from it. And then, like I said, in the beginning of the show, like there's been a lot of people that are not even in law enforcement who appreciate the show and th- they learn a lot. And I think it's cool for them to see like behind the scenes of just, you know, three cops, three dudes yeah. sitting at a table, bullshitting, having fun with it, three trying to be cool educational. Dudes. Yeah. Well, like, I, and, I, and I think that um, we all three have different paths in law enforcement and yeah, yeah. we have different expertise. So I do uh, implore you to reach out to, you know, Mark, if you have your SWAT questions, reach out to Kyle, if you have your canine questions and me if i guess detective questions or something like that or something more specific if it's a general like reach out to any of us but yeah if uh, your goal is to be you know one of the things mm-hmm. that we have done in our careers then reach out to that person i think and um yeah will help you out yeah i i i cannot think if if i don't reach out if i don't respond to your question it's literally because i'm dumb and i can't figure it out <laughs> <laughs> it's not because i'm like screw this person okay i'll tell you that right now hey <laughs> dude you should just respond back to those with the the little emoji with the guy that's yeah, like i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know yeah, yeah. i think that's pretty respectful guys yeah. will be like all right fucking guy yeah, doesn't no, know no, and i'll be completely that's honest fine. with you if i don't know i'll tell you i don't know um, I, I'll yeah, probably don't do know a everything. little research of my own and I'll be like, Hey, look, I looked at this place or something like that, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to do your homework for you. Also, I might be like, Hey, check out this website. Mm-hmm. But if it's like more like personal, like why I did what I did and stuff like that, then please reach out to us yeah. for yep. those things. Yeah, for sure. Or uh, why you didn't about- do what you did. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like we, we're, we don't do this podcast or nothing. Like we pay to do this podcast. Yeah. Like, you know, we're not. You know, we're not making yeah, this money off of this. Costs us money, just so you yeah, know. it's yeah. costing it costing money, right? But but we enjoy it. And um, again, if you guys have questions, well, we're trying to do both educational and entertaining. Yeah, I mean, we're yeah, not we're trying, trying to be. This isn't school, okay? No, <laughs> there are podcasts out there that are like strictly just educational on like a certain niche in law enforcement. Yeah, and, that, and that's cool. All right, I think that wraps it up. Where's our? Uh... Did you guys take my mug? Mug. Oh, there he is. Typical yeah. sergeant. You guys, what'd you guys do? See, micromanaging. Micromanaging. You did it. Yeah. All right. Just this to reiterate, is, I guys. I my drink. All right. Yeah, tap, right. Tapwaxandgo.com. Go check them out. Girlsbarbecue.com and barbellsandsubmission.com. Use, and di- use discount code SHOTSFIRE20 to get 20% off. And with that, we'll uh, see you guys on the well, next one. As always, yeah. check out uh, SWATConference.org. Yeah. Yep. Cheers. Roust. Shot fired. Copy additional shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shooting at us. Shooting at us.